Hello calculus students and seekers of truth. We are going to work on this problem that involves a curve named tau. And I'm going to skip over part A. I'm going to leave that to you. And I'll just say use uh, implicit differentiation. So this is a chance for you to practice that old fashioned concept. Right? Um, and you'll see how I use differentiation as implicit differentiation as well in part C, but this is a homework problem. So, and it already tells you what the answer is. So you just gotta work it through and show that that's what it is. Now I'm gonna focus my energies here on showing you how to do part B and as well as part C, which is a little bit more challenging. So this says there exists a point on tau which has a horizontal tangent when x is equal to three find the y coordinate of that point. So horizontal tangent means that the slope is equal to zero. In other words, dy dx is equal to zero. And this is x is equal to three. So what we need to do is set dy dx equal to zero and solve for y. Okay, so we already know that x is equal to three This is 8y here in the denominator, minus 3 times 3. Okay. Now we can cross this out because we don't have to worry about the denominator. If the numerator is 0, everything is 0. Solving this, we have 3y minus 6 equal to 0, so that means y has to equal 2. So that means this curve has a horizontal tangent at the point 3, 2. So there's that. And there's really nothing else for us to do for this part of the problem. Now we're going to go on to part C, which asks us, you know, given, I mean, for the point that we found, determine whether the curve has a local maximum, a local minimum, or neither. Local max, local min, or neither. Now normally we would make some sort of sign chart and try to use the first derivative test, but because the derivative here is given in both in terms of y and x, um, we really don't have a choice except to use the second derivative test. So use the second derivative test. And in order to do that, we're going to have to figure out what is the second derivative. Now we already know that the first derivative is equal to this expression 3y minus 2x over 8y minus 3x. So now we have to find the second derivative. So this is, using this notation, this is d squared y over dx squared. And we're going to have to take the derivative of this expression. And we're going to need to use um, the, the quotient rule. Okay? So the derivative of the top is going to be 3 y prime, okay, keeping in mind that y is a function of x, okay, y is a function of x. Okay. x is a variable and y is the function, minus 2, that's the derivative of, of the top, times the bottom, all over the derivative of, I'm sorry, ooh, I'm not done, minus the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 8y prime minus 3 times the top, which is 3y minus 2x. <coughs> All of this over the bottom squared. Okay. So that's the second derivative. Now we need to figure out what is the second derivative at the point 3, 2, okay, at this point 3, 2, what is that second derivative? Well, some things um, in this problem are very, very nice. Uh, keep in mind here, I'm going to highlight a few things. You have y prime here, another y prime over here. 
And the thing is, y prime is exactly the same thing as dy dx. This is just a different notation, right? So we know that y prime and dy dx are the same thing. We also know from the previous part of the problem, dy dx at 3, 0 is equal to 0. Okay? From part B of the problem, um, part, part B of the problem, it says that when x is equal to 3, there's a horizontal tangent. And we already figured out that y is equal to 2 at that point. So at the point 3, 2, excuse me, this should say 3, 2, not 3, 0. At the point 3, 2, the derivative of this curve is equal to 0. So what we can do now is uh, make these substitutions. And this actually makes our lives a lot easier. Because the derivative, normally I would actually have to take dy dx and plug it into here and get a huge mess. But we already know that dy dx or y prime is equal to 0. So this part right here is just going to become negative 2. And then I still have my 8y minus 3x minus this whole thing here is going to go away. This is 8 times 0. So this is negative 3 times 3y minus 2x. All of this over 8y minus 3x quantity squared. So there's still some arithmetic involved here for me to handle. But it's much simpler now that we know that dy, we use the fact that dy dx is in fact equal to 0 at the point 3, 2. Okay. So let's make some substitutions here. This is negative 2 times 8y, which is 2, minus 3 times uh, x, which is 3, minus a negative 3. So we're just going to call that plus 3 times 3 times y, which is 2, minus 2 times x, which is 3. All of this over 8 times uh, y, which is 2, minus 3x, which is 3, quantity squared. Okay. Now, this seems like a crazy mess, and it kind of is, right? But when we think about what this problem is asking, it's asking if the point 3, 2 is a min, a max, or a neither, or neither. So all we really need to do is determine whether the second derivative is positive, negative, or zero. We don't actually need to figure out if what the exact number is. I mean, we can, but we don't really have to. We just have to figure out whether it's equal to zero, or it's positive, or it's negative. So we don't care about the denominator because the denominator is always going to be positive because of that square right there. You see this number, this is 16 minus 9 squared, so that's going to be positive. We don't have to worry too much about it. We just have to figure out the numerator. Is the numerator going to be positive or negative? So the, the real question, again, is the numerator going to be positive or negative? And so we just have to work out the numerator. So the numerator, this is negative 2. That's 16 minus 9, so that's 7, plus 3. And this is 6 minus 6, so that's 0. Okay. So, uh, we, so this is going to be negative 14, so this is going to be a negative answer. So we can conclude by saying that by the second derivative test, I'm running out of paper here. All right, so we could say um, d squared y dx, this is the second derivative, at 3, 2 is less than 0. So the curve is concave down. Okay, so whatever the curve is doing, it's it's concave down and it has a slope of zero. Therefore, by the second derivative test, tau, that's the name of the curve here, special fancy t, 
Let me make this T actually fancy. <coughs> Has um, a maximum at 3, 2. Okay. So by the second derivative test, we know that the slope is equal to 0. That was already given to us. And we also know that uh, the curve is going to be concave down, so that must be a maximum. Now, let me show you what the graph of this, this gnarly looking curve looks like. Okay, so this is just for uh, you know, your understanding for your edification here. Um, you, we've already solved everything, but you see that when I graph the curve, it looks like this uh, slanted elliptical orbit, almost like uh, a planet orbiting the sun or something like that. And you see that at the point 3, 2, the slope here is 0. This tangent line is horizontal. And you can see that it's curving down a little bit, so it's concave down. So therefore, this point here must be a maximum. Now, we could figure all this out. We could deduce all of this using calculus and the first and second derivative test. But, but if, you know, just to, for your understanding, the graph here hopefully um, illustrates and clarifies that point for you. As always, ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.